uh, some some thoughts today. Uh, Vicky's been using social media as a communication tool since 2007 when she created her first um, pages on Facebook and set up her LinkedIn profile. She's incorporated social media feeds into the design of online learning experiences in higher ed as far back as the mid 2000s. Um, she was about 10 years old at that time. Um, she's written an ebook on social media, First Steps for Business, and has assisted entrepreneurs in social media strategy. She's also held um, business development roles at two major universities and now runs a consulting business, Teach, Inspire, Connect. And you can see that on her shirt as well. Love it. Um, Vicki's both a conference speaker and a workshop facilitator. She teaches in the executive education classroom on embracing tech and new instructional tools. She likes to view change and disruption as an opportunity. In the past 18 months, um, she has focused on the voice interface, um, which she discussed in her podcast, Agile um, Digital Business. To add to her facilitation toolkit, she was recently accepted by Wiley Education as an authorized partner Everything Disc and the Five Behaviors. She's also a certified trainer of Everything Disc. Um, she is a source for many assessments in the portfolio and in facilitation of team development sessions and staff retreats in person and virtual. Um, Vicki's LinkedIn profile and her engagement in the platform have allowed her to stay connected with colleagues and to curate content that she values along her own learning journey. So Vicki, I'll let you take it away. And let me just say before you do one thing, as Vicki speaks, if you guys have questions um, you would like to um, in, engage with, just um, feel free to put those in the chat and then we'll pick those up as we go along. All right, Vicki, thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, good morning, depending on what time of the, uh, what time zone you're watching in. Thank you for being here today and I want to let you know that I'm not going to be watching the chat. I'll count on uh, Michael to take a look at the chat. So uh, Michael, feel free to interrupt me as you need to, to interject anything that people have shared. Uh, before we start, just via using the reaction tool or a comment in the chat, uh, just, just share a, a, a raised hand if you've looked at LinkedIn today or commented on somebody's post seeing maybe about half of our group and maybe you did that in preparation <laughs> for the for the session today great so that's that's something that i'm going to bring up here in a few moments i i have created a few slides that will help guide me i our session's going to go by very quickly and i do not want to miss out on some of these things that i want to share with you i have taught this session in a few different settings before and uh, have kind of shrunk it down a little bit. And can can you all see the uh, slides? Okay. We can. We can okay. see your presentation. Okay, great. And I I have a instead of spending time working with settings, I'm not seeing your faces at the moment now that my slides are full screen. So Michael, interrupt me verbally if you need to, please. Okay. Um, because I'm not going to be able to uh, to see reactions and I don't want to eat up our time. So one of the things I'm demonstrating for you here is when I'm sharing in any kind of a presentation, I'll make sure that my contact information is right up at the front. I do. I sometimes also include it at the end. I encourage you to do that, especially for engaging with people in social media. So some of these things I'm going to share with you apply in LinkedIn and will apply to your LinkedIn profile, but you can also uh, translate them over if you're active in other platforms as well. So you'll see one of the things I have at the bottom of this slide are two of the hashtags that I use. One is hashtag teach, inspire, connect. The other is hashtag agile digital biz. The first one I use in almost every bit of original content that I create and post in LinkedIn. So if you want to follow that hashtag, you'll easily be able to find what I've posted. So if you find any of this kind of thing interesting, you can follow that hashtag and LinkedIn will serve that up to you in your feed. So that's why you're seeing this slide early on. This is just a, a 
kind of a rundown of some of the topics of today's session here in Disruptor League. I'm gonna share things about prepping your LinkedIn profile. I'm guessing all of you probably have a LinkedIn profile already. So there might be some things that you can use to notch it up a little bit, uh, get more engaged in the platform, uh, do things to your profile that would cause people to wanna to come back and see what you're up to and what kind of content you're sharing. I've, as I've filtered out some of the things that I teach in a longer session, I've kept in some of the, what I call the easy to apply tips. And I'm gonna show you some examples of taking a look at post and static post and video post insights and talk just a few moments about engaging with colleagues, not only in LinkedIn, but outside of the platform. That has actually been one of the ways I have driven more quality traffic to my LinkedIn profile is talking about things I've curated, content I've curated on my LinkedIn feed when I'm not in social media. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And as Michael mentioned, please do uh, share your questions, your comments, or if you want to interrupt me, please do. I love that we have a, a the size of group that'll make that really easy. So one of the first things that I want to share is this slide here with some points about customizing your profile. That's the first step in getting to that all-star status. LinkedIn has five different levels of status in, for your profile. All-star is the highest level that you can achieve. I started first digging into this back when I was a graduate programs director at a university, and I was giving some sessions on LinkedIn for grad students and helping them understand how to be more discoverable by recruiters who were doing searches in LinkedIn. And I thought, well, if I'm going to be teaching about it, I better get my own profile to that all-star status. So that's when I first started really digging into profiles themselves and understanding the details that went into getting that all-star status. So it's a lot about providing the content that LinkedIn wants you to provide on your profile so that your profile is uh, discoverable in search. So that could be by recruiters. It could be by your next customer. It could be clients that you're interacting with. So we all use uh, LinkedIn as a search engine. And a little sidebar, your LinkedIn posts will show up in Google searches and Bing searches and other places as well. So that's a huge reason to be active in the platform if you're active in business. So one of the things that I do, and this is, this is important for your all-star status, you have to have a photo. And I recommend customizing your photo in some way. So I shared this photo of me as an example to show, this is simply a photo from my iPhone. It's a selfie. I did not spend any money other than money to own my iPhone. Uh, to take this photo. And then I sent it to an artist in Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can find thousands and thousands of graphic artists and copywriters and video editors and WordPress site designers, just all kinds of entrepreneurs out there on Fiverr. So I think for about $5, I had an artist drop the background out of this photo. So now it has that white background. And then also they added some makeup for me. I didn't have any eyeliner or anything on that day. When I took that photo, I was heading to a horse event <laughs> uh, down in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, the, uh, this person that was working on the photo asked, hey, do you, would you like any, any photo retouching? And I said, could you add some makeup for me? <laughs> so they did that. So there you, a little, little bit of a tip for you. It's really easy to get your photos modified if you're not comfortable doing that yourself. And then adding, keeping your photos fairly current is helpful to the people who are looking for you on the platform. We'll go into a little bit more detail about the headline. So that's the shorter description that people see right away when they click on your profile. That about section, you can choose to write it in first or third person. I'll touch on that in just a minute. The skills section, that's a, an important part for that all-star status. You need to have at least five skills listed. And 
select skills to put out there on your platform that people can endorse you for that are related to the work that you do or the work that you want to be doing. And stay away from the type of skills that all of us have these days in the business community. And I probably shouldn't speak that generally about it, but an example I will give is there's no need, if you're in the business community today, to, you don't need to list Microsoft as a skill. And I see that on a lot of profiles. And I don't know if it's left over from the days when somebody graduated from college and they were trying to get their first job. We just assume that you can interact with a computer and that you know how to use a word processor. List skills that are specific to the type of profession that you're in. And then the other thing is connections. You need to have about at least 50 connections to have an all-star status profile. And I'll share a few more ideas about how you can build up the connections on your profile. So this slide will just blow through pretty quickly, but wanted to show you, formally I would have that line at the top of this slide, very formal looking about my uh, master's degree in education. I, have a graduate degree in learning instruction and design and design have in my past part of my career designed online courses for adult learners. And I'm a Lean Six Sigma black belt. That's a real formal way to say who I am, but I'm guessing it doesn't really cause you to want to engage with me in the LinkedIn platform. So I encourage you to write a headline that really tells people about what it is you're doing today or what you would like to be doing if you're looking for your next role. And there, I'd literally change my headline probably once a month. So don't feel like you have to stay married to whatever you have listed. Another little tip I wanna give you here is if your organization is one that gives kind of funky or fun position titles, I have a friend who's top dog in the, his organization. That's, I love those kind of titles, but you might wanna list something that describes what that actually means when you're talking about what kind of words to put in your headline. The headline is something that's very helpful when people are searching. So for instance, if a recruiter is searching or if somebody is designing ads for LinkedIn, they're going to pick up certain keywords in job titles. So if we go back to that one I just mentioned, top dog, it's doubtful that somebody's going to be searching on that kind of a title, but they might search on a title executive director or director, or you, you get the idea. So I've listed a, a sample here of the way you could write your title. Uh, you can use this for lots of different things, but you see that uh, under the second bullet point there, I have insert job title, helping X do Y. And by the way, I do have these slides out on slideshare.net. So if you wanna look at them later, they are out there for you to see. That's a, an app that LinkedIn bought many years ago. And so when they did that, I started adding most of my slides for my presentations to slideshare.net. It is a great way for your content to be discovered in Google search. So little hint for those of you uh, running companies and uh, building up your business or your personal brand, those slideshare.net slide decks, very discoverable in search. Here are some of the missed opportunities. So in the past month, as I've been preparing for this presentation for today, thinking about what, what is it that I see when I'm out in the platform? And I'm out there every day, uh, interacting with my colleagues and future clients, hopefully. One of the things that I see people missing is they don't have anything in their featured content section. That's a section you can click, you know, when you're adjusting your profile, you can click to show featured content. So I will often feature a video that I have out on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can feature a PDF document. You can, excuse me, feature a graphic. You can feature a post. So if you visit my LinkedIn profile today, I featured the post, a video post that I made a few days ago about speaking for this session. So it's just a really terrific way to help people understand what it is you do. So if you've 
uh, if you're building out your personal brand, if you're going to be speaking at an event, if you've written a book, if you've got a new slide presentation that you think would be valuable content for the people that visit your profile, add it in that featured content. Asking people for recommendations and giving recommendations. So make it a two-way street. One of the ways I do this is anytime I hear someone speak at a conference and whatever they were sharing just really resonated with me, I make a note in my conference notes and I'll go back to my hotel room back in the days when we traveled to conferences or to my computer if it's virtual. And I'll reach out to that person in LinkedIn, ask them for a connection with a note. I almost never ask for a connection with someone in LinkedIn without writing a little note with it which is easy, you need to do that from your laptop or your desktop. And I mentioned something about their uh, talk. So I make that connection and then I offer up a recommendation. They don't have to use the recommendation. They don't have to make it appear on their profile, but often they do and it's a nice gesture. And don't expect one in return, but you'll find that Many times when you do that, if the person knows you, they might offer to write one for you. Now, just this morning, I was in a meeting with a colleague that I knew from my university days, and he was giving me some mentorship as I move my business into this consulting realm. And I'm doing facilitation of team sessions uh, in team development, situational leadership, some different leadership topics. And anyway, I asked him, came right out and asked him at the end of our conversation, would you be willing to write a testimonial for me that I can use on my webpage? And he agreed to that. And he asked if I would write two or three different versions of it and send that to him. And then he'll tweak it and put it in his own words. That's a great way to offer uh, when you're asking someone to write a recommendation for you provide the initial content so that they don't have to work as hard to write the recommendation. And then I had mentioned engaging with colleagues in the platform and outside. So every day, I sometimes will skip the weekends, but business days, I try to make sure that I connect. I don't necessarily mean connect, add a new connection, but like a post, comment on a post, share a post. I do at least two of those a day with two people I'm connected with. And sometimes I'll go out and do a search on a hashtag about something I'm interested in. And I'll comment on somebody's content that I don't know. That's just a wonderful way to develop engagement in the platform that you're not seeking. I'm not seeking anything for it. I'm just saying, hey, that was an interesting bit of content. I appreciate what you shared. And Eventually, that comes back to help you out in your own personal brand, in your own business. The other thing that I do is ask people when I'm in a session. So if I'm leading a program, I did this quite often in the university setting in the exec ed classroom. Instead of waiting for whatever the department or the organization might post on the company page, I would post things on my personal profile. So picture we've gone on a tour of the campus uh, the evening before. And I would ask folks, I would say, hey, I'd like to shoot some video of this and put it out on my LinkedIn profile tomorrow. So if you're comfortable being in the video, would you, you know, be over here and go ahead and just enjoy the tour, but I'm gonna capture you enjoying this campus tour. And so I get their permission ahead to include them in the video. And then I would post that that evening on my profile. And the next morning in the classroom, I would let them know where it was. I would literally email people the link or if they'd already given me their uh, cell phone number, I would ask ahead, but would text people the link. I got all kinds of engagement that way and people sharing with their colleagues, hey, I'm at such and such a university doing this program and it's really awesome. And here's the tour we did last night. That's a, that's a fun way to build up engagement and people enjoy it. Give, give them content they enjoy interacting with. So that's part of my point about being social. It is a social media platform. And it's just frustrating to me when 
we only post outgoing things, but we don't comment and interact with the content of others. And you don't have to do it all the time, but just occasionally. And if you post original content, you will be among the 1% of LinkedIn users. That to me is amazing. That, that's an easy way to get into a 1%. Um, many people will kind of lurk in LinkedIn. They might like or comment or share, but they don't create their own content. So if you want to jump into the 1% and have people start having more interest in following what you're doing, create your own content. Another thing you can do is be active in groups. And if you work for an organization, you can share the posts from your company page. I'll talk just a little bit more on that in a moment. So another thing you can do, this, this will add credibility to your profile. If you join a group or more than one group, that's related to your profession. So as people are scrolling down your profile and taking a look at it, they're going to see uh, what kind of groups you're involved with. There's a group right here with Disruptor League that you can join. So if you're not already a member of that group, that's a place that you can start. And that'll share a message on your profile that you're interested in innovation and doing things a little bit differently. So take a look at your profile. And I, I also consider you I also ask you to consider looking at groups that you might have joined earlier in your career that you're not active in anymore. It might make sense to remove yourself from those groups so that they're no longer showing on your profile. I'm going to pause for a moment and stop the share. And Michael, I thought I'd just touch base and see if there's anything that I ought to slow down and uh, develop any further. Um, there haven't been any questions yet. Um, Scott did say this is great advice and he'll <laughs> he'll reuse his content from other platforms that he posts in LinkedIn when you were talking about being part of the 1%. Yes. Um, Scott, thank you for sharing that. That is a that's a, a great way to make it easy <laughs> to share content without creating the wheel. Um, one of the things that I will do along that same vein is you can grab the link to your LinkedIn post and share it out to Twitter or other places. Uh, occasionally, I'll make a post in the other platforms where I'm active and say, hey, join me over on LinkedIn. I post most of my content there. So if you, if you do get overwhelmed by the number of social media platforms that are available, I encourage you to have a presence in the platforms where your customers are located and where they are active, but it's okay to drive them to a particular platform. So if you wanna do most of your posting and social media time in LinkedIn, then let people know that's where you're active and drive them in that direction. I, I often, I've helped different organizations with their social media throughout the years and several different university departments. And it's not uncommon for the social media manager or strategist or you know whoever's in charge of that role to get told to be in a certain platform or to focus on a certain platform for the organization. And it's fine for the head of a company to have a preference, but honestly, when it comes to social media, the most important thing is where your customers are. And Sometimes it's hard to uh, report that back to the head of a company, but uh, this, this is one instance where it's pretty important for your organization to be active where the customers are. So in that line, it could be that your customers aren't in LinkedIn, but I honestly think it's important for anybody who is a professional in their, or whatever type of profession or industry you're in, to have a presence in LinkedIn, even if your company is more active in Instagram or TikTok or you know, somewhere else. Uh, it's, it's very good to be here and to be active. So inviting people to connect with you. I mentioned earlier that you need to have at least 50 connections for that LinkedIn all-star status. I, I mentioned earlier that I use uh, connections when I've met people at conferences, I follow up right away within 24 to 48 hours. And I always include a note. And I mentioned something about 
when we met or something I heard them say from this from the speakers platform, I, I don't just leave it up to LinkedIn to send the connection without any personalization. And I encourage you to resist selling in your connection note or selling in that first message. As a podcaster, I get that a lot. People will uh, reach out to me and write in their note. They're already selling something to me. Like they want to book me on, uh, they don't want to book me. They want to book someone they're representing on my podcast. And that I, I don't even click yes to connect with those kinds of requests. So I, I don't need extra traffic in my messaging uh, inbox in LinkedIn. Set up a relationship first. And I, I like to share the idea that picture that you're walking into a cocktail reception at a conference. And what would you say to a person that you're meeting for the first time at that cocktail reception? You probably wouldn't come right out the gate asking if so-and-so that they're friends with could be a guest on your podcast. You're not going to say that. You're, you're going to say hello and you're going to ask them about something they're enjoying about the event. Or I, We all have different ways of, of connecting at a cocktail reception, but we're not going to come right out the gate selling. Hey, Vicki. Yes. Um, Donna had a question about um, a personal LinkedIn page versus a, a business LinkedIn page. If you have a side hustle, um, do you want to speak to that? Yes. We, thank you, Donna, for the question. I, a I'm a firm believer that everybody should have a, a person, every individual in business should have a personal profile, which is mainly what I'm focusing on here today. You do hear me mention company pages occasionally. Mm -hmm for if we're talking companies or departments or organizations, definitely feel like they should have a company page in the organ in, in the platform. I have seen where companies or departments will set up a personal profile for the department, which is not, it's a LinkedIn no-no. Um, and, and actually could be taken down by LinkedIn if it's found. Uh, another reason that you would want to have a separate page is if you decide to run advertising, you can only do that from a page. You can't do that from a profile. Mm -hmm. If you have a side hustle, definitely I would have a, a company page. One of the reasons is you can upload your logo for that side hustle. And then those things can be showing on your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So it helps, helps people, you know, realize what's, what all you're connected to. I actually need to up my game in that area. I, I uh, have not done that very well with my podcast. And every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, I need this. I need to work on that because uh, they're not reflected very well right now on my LinkedIn profile. I up until recently have been so very focused on the departments and companies I've been doing work for that my own uh, profile and my own side hustles have languished a little bit. But. Yeah, does that answer your question, Donna? Thank you. Yes. Anybody else have any questions before I go back to, I'm gonna do a time check here too. Okay. No more questions at this point. All right, and are you seeing the slide again okay? Yes. Okay, great. One of the things that I also do, so here's, here's another tip for you about keeping active in the social media platform, is to schedule the times that you plan to reach out to your connections. So I keep, you know, you can do this any way you want. It could be a printed planner, it could be a Google Sheet or an Excel sheet or something, but uh, might be if you have a CRM system, let it trigger you on dates when you want to reach out to people in your list, that's a great way to stay connected. And in fact, the meeting that I had this morning that I mentioned earlier came about because I had that person listed in my calendar that I wanted to reach out to him. And we set up a meeting after I did that. So make it a scheduled thing. Don't, don't make it haphazard, although randomly reaching out to somebody in a platform is also fine. So I just want to encourage you to have a plan, have some strategy behind it. Yeah. 
here is something, an idea where you might want to weigh, should you go to that premium version of LinkedIn or be on the uh, free version? So if you have the free version, which is the one I'm using at the moment, when you do visit somebody's profile, they get a notification or can see that you have visited their profile. I like to do that. I, I make a point of visiting a couple of profiles each week and endorsing people for their skills that I'm aware of that they have that are outstanding. So I don't just do that randomly. Like if I don't know the person very well, if I haven't seen them in action in their profession, then I'm not going to endorse them. But if it's somebody I've worked with, somebody I've interacted with in a professional development program, someone I've seen speak at a conference, I'm going to endorse them for skills that I feel confident that they have. I like the fact that I don't have that premium version of LinkedIn because it tells them that I've been on their profile. Now, they'll also get a notification if I endorse them for something. But I just think that's a neat way to let people know that, hey, I'm still out here. I'm, st I'm still active on the platform. So even if I don't actually take an action on their profile or I don't endorse them for something in that moment, they're going to get a notification that I have visited their profile. So that's something you might need to weigh. If, if you're a recruiter or you're in a different type of profession where you would like to be able to lurk on someone's profile without them knowing, then you might want to go to that premium version. Uh, but for I, you know, I'm in a more, have been in many of my roles, more of a sales type of a role or a customer facing role. I like the customer or the client to know that I've been there. So in these next few posts I, uh, or slides, I wanna show you some examples of the insights that we could get from our content that we post on LinkedIn. This is a slide, a post that I made about a week or so ago that now has uh, well over 200 some views. And it's simply the coffee mug. I was drinking coffee from that morning uh, when I was sitting out on the back patio at the farmhouse. And it makes me laugh that these you know, really authentic, unplanned, not branded posts, those are always the ones that get the most traction and people seem to enjoy them the most. So notice that I've, I've talked about in the post itself, I've talked a little bit about journaling being a part of my morning routine. So it doesn't have anything to do with my company or anything I'm selling. Uh, I talk about the crab apple blossoms that uh, were I missed falling in my coffee that morning, and then I included some hashtags. So you see the hashtag rainy morning, hashtag coffee, hashtag morning routine, hashtag teach inspire connect. That's the one that I always include. That way I'm using some different hashtags that might get my post picked up on somebody else's search whom I'm not already connected with in LinkedIn. So that's a great reason to post this kind of a thing photo, video, just real authentic, but maybe behind the scenes kind of content that people can relate to and enjoy. And when you look at this kind of post, you go, ah, yeah, they're not selling me anything in this moment. <laughs> they're they're uh, just sharing something about coffee. So I'm gonna take you to uh, the insights that LinkedIn provided from that particular post. And now you see, uh, this was collected May 3rd, so the data is now old. There's new information about this post, but I'm seeing uh, right away where people are from who visited the post. So four people from Purdue, uh, people from the University of Notre Dame, people from Mophie, uh, and my friends at Disruptor League, and then I see the titles. Seven people had the title of executive director, six were business strategists, five salesperson, five university professor, and then the geographic location. 14 from Lafayette, Indiana area, 11 from greater Chicago, 11 from Indianapolis, eight from Charlotte, North Carolina, six from South Bend, Indiana. So lots of information. This is a very interesting way to glean demographic information about the people who are following you. And it might, and it does guide me in what kind of content I'm going to post, what, what's resonating with people. So here's that little video post. So anytime I'm going to be speaking at a conference or 
doing this type of a thing in a virtual event, I always create a video post ahead of time and let people know that it's coming up. I put a slightly longer video on my YouTube channel and then I uh, re-edit the video so that it works a little better in mobile. So I, I set it up for a square display in LinkedIn for mobile because over 80% of people viewing LinkedIn are looking at it in mobile. And uh, here's, here's some of the information that I got from that. So uh, back on May 11th, I had 44.9 minutes of viewing of that 59 second video. And at that time, 155 lifetime views and 138 unique viewers. Now, all of those numbers have gone up since that time. So isn't that fun? 59 seconds worth of video and look at all the minutes of watch time that it has gotten. So if you're, this is something to think about, like if you're asking for people to speak for your event, or maybe you host a podcast and you're asking your next guest or considering who would be your next guest, take a look at their social media feeds and see if they're active. Are they posting content? And more specifically, are they posting video content? Are they sharing about the fact that they're either going to be a guest on your show or do they do follow-up posts? If you find guests that are in that kind of place in their business where they're hungry for additional clients, additional customers, and they're gonna be talking about whatever it is they're doing with you on their social media feeds, that's a win-win for both. Now, when you, when you go to the realm where you're inviting keynote speakers that are like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, that have many businesses and presence all over social media, he's much less likely to tell somebody in his social media that he's going to be a guest on somebody's podcast because he, he, one, probably just doesn't have the time to do it, uh, but probably doesn't make sense for him at that point in his career. Now, he may may be doing that and I'm not realizing it. So I, I don't want to claim one way or the other, but you kind of get the idea. If you can find somebody that's in that spot where they're moving up in their life as a speaker or their life as an author, they're more likely to be posting things about being a part of your, whatever it might be, your conference or that they were shared a contributed a chapter to your book or that they were a guest writer on your blog, you know, that kind of thing. So let's go on. I think I have one more slide. There's just some more insights about that particular video. So you're seeing what companies, I had 29 people from LinkedIn that watched this video, uh, two people from Bench Prep, two people from Apple, two from Medtronic. Uh, 41 were salespeople, seven business strategists, six executive directors, five program managers, 43 people from the Chicago area. I'm guessing that lines up some with LinkedIn. And I'll tell you what I did. I contacted a colleague of mine who works for LinkedIn, reached out to him in LinkedIn in the messaging part of the platform and said, hey, Here's the link to a video post I created. I'm gonna be teaching a session about LinkedIn profiles. Do you mind sharing it with your friends and followers? And he did that. So heck, there is nothing wrong with asking people, giving them the specific link to a post and telling them about it, saying, hey, I thank you for sharing this with your following. Let's just quickly take a look at some things that your organization can do. I, I wanted to stay more focused on us individu as individuals, but that can certainly help your organization, whether you uh, are running your own business like I am, or if you are a, an employee in a company, organizations can do things to make it easier for their employees to share their content. So one thing, you can ask your team members to optimize their personal profiles in LinkedIn for the brand. And I say ask, and I put in parentheses there, it's okay to request it, but not to require it. Because your LinkedIn profile is your own personal thing. It's not something that your employer owns. And so remember that you're asking people and that, that not to be frustrated if they don't feel like changing it. But they can 
list that they are an employee of your organization. They could join a group that your company hosts on LinkedIn. They could be sharing your content, all kinds of things that they could do to show connections. Another thing that I uh, discovered a few years back that I was fascinated with is this LinkedIn um, sales, the social selling index. And I'll show you a couple of screenshots on how you can use that. You can feature your new employees. That, that's, I probably should have listed that in missed opportunity back in that earlier slide. If you have new employees that have joined their organi your organization, sing their praise. Tell, you know, tell people why you brought them on board. Your current employees, sing their praises. Are they, going, are they attending a conference? Did they come back from a conference and, and share what they learned? Give them a shout out for their efforts for your company. And that also starts to show that your organization is a place other people might want to work. They might want to be a part of your team. Here's that social selling index. Uh, this one is from a few years ago. So I've included the older screenshot and then I have a newer one for you to take a look at. So this one was captured when I was back in the executive education space within a university as an employee. And at that point in time, I was in the top 2% for social selling index for that particular industry. What was, I was thinking about this the other day as I was adding the additional screenshot so here, here you're seeing that the people in that particular industry, sales professionals in the higher education industry have an average social selling index of 21, which put me in the top 2%. And here you see people in your network have an average social selling index of 39 and my rank at that time, top 14. So this is something any of us can run uh, really easy to do uh, on your own profile. Now, as I've switch. So here's a newer screenshot. They've combined the report into one screen. And LinkedIn, because of the things I've adjusted on my profile, I've updated my about section, I've updated my headline, the kinds of things I'm posting today are more related to team development, uh, facilitating sessions, using the everything disk content. The AI in LinkedIn, the artificial intelligence, was able to tell right away that I have changed industries. And in this particular industry, here's my social selling index in the top 2%. And I think I have one more. Oh, that's where I'm comparing the two. So I'm inferring from this that maybe this is a better fit for me. I have increased my social selling index score. I don't know, it could be I'm just more excited about it than I was the other thing, I don't know. It's kind of fun to look at the data. So I'm gonna wrap this up. I do wanna say, involve your team, inform your team. Maybe you are your team, so you maybe you need to be involving and informing uh, some of the people in your immediate circle if you're a solo entrepreneur. When I say inform, let them know. So if you're operating, for instance, in a Slack channel uh, with other team members, let them know when there's a post out there that you would like for them to go visit. Uh, give them the link to it or create some graphics that they can use and make original content on their own personal feeds. Make it as easy for them as possible. Uh, you might write up two or three different ways that they could share content related to your organization. And I've already mentioned this uh, about keeping your content as raw and authentic as often as you can. Back a few years ago when I was doing work with the university and I was helping with their, uh, not the whole university in terms of social media, but the social media profiles of that department, I would notice that when I would share like a sunset photo that one of the team members had provided for me to use over the lake at the university. That kind of a post would get way more organic reach and likes and comments and, you know, universities, alumni have such connections with universities. And so in this instance, you know, they would see the lake that they recognized and like and comment and put, put in the comments fond memories that they had uh, of their time on the campus. So I encourage you not to 
fill up your feed, whether it's your personal feed or your business page feed, don't fill it up with branded content where everything looks like a billboard that you're driving by on the highway. Those kinds of things are okay occasionally when you're announcing something, an event, a conference, a guest speaker, a podcast episode. Those are, they certainly have a fit. But uh, Gary Vaynerchuk in, in his one of his many books, he suggested a 90-10 ratio where 90% of the time you're giving in your content and 10% of the time you're selling. So that raw, authentic content is a great way to give to people on the platform. In closing here, I just wanted to show you an example of uh, social media graphics. Always do keep the mobile platform in mind as you're designing, whether you are designing yourself in a platform like Canva, maybe you're using a Fiverr artist, or maybe you have a full-time graphic designer on your team. This is an example from a university where you see round one of a graphic that's promoting a professional development program. And it got tested, it actually got posted, and it, some of the key information wasn't showing in mobile. So with a tiny tweak of the design of that particular graphic, it got reposted and you see the difference. So now if somebody's scrolling through on their phone without having to open the post, they can see the dates of that particular program and the name of the program. So just keep that in mind as you're posting graphics and take a look at how they appear and if you need to take something down and repost it, that's okay. Or if it already has a lot of likes and shares and things, don't take it down, just tweak it and then post it again a few days later. When, when you share content out on LinkedIn, a very small percentage of the people who follow you are going to see that particular post. So it is fine to repeat it again. I was doing that as I was coming up to this event here, speaking in this thought leader session. I was posting about the session daily for about a week and then had also posted about it earlier because I knew that people were not going to be signing in at the same time I was posting or the algorithm was going to choose not to show it to certain folks that follow me. So don't hesitate to share often. All right, I'm going to stop there. And I thought maybe we could, if you have anything you want to ask or want to share a key takeaway from today, I would love to hear it. Michael, I'm going to turn it back to you and I'll mute for a second. Okay. Yeah, and feel free to unmute um, if you have a question or a, an aha um, from today's session. Well, there was certainly a lot of information, Vicki, <laughs> from, from all-star status to, you know, uh, posting and connecting and, and formatting. And um, we did record the session, so we'll get it posted out on the site um, as soon as possible so that um, anybody who wants to kind of go back and, um, and, and listen as you maybe tweak your own profile, you'll have the opportunity to do that. I know I'm gonna try that, um, <laughs> but I, I, there was a lot. So I need to listen to it as I kind of go through my own profile, um, but lots of wisdom here, Vicki. So we really do appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. One, yeah. one of the things I had meant to mention up at the front, and I often include this, is if you haven't already claimed your custom URL for LinkedIn to do that, and that's something you can do when you're editing your profile. So for instance, I've claimed my personal name, Vicki Maris, as my LinkedIn URL. And we each have that option. Now someone might, if you have a name that somebody has already claimed, you might have to customize it differently. But you don't have to use the uh, LinkedIn will give you a number on your URL. So if you want to customize it, that's a great way. Great thing great. to do. I'm, a, I, I'm happy, you know, if anybody wants to reach out Later, I'm happy to answer questions after some of this all sinks in. Yeah, I put Vicki's um, LinkedIn um, link in the chat. Um, and then you can also connect with her through a, a link. Um, your YouTube link is out there as well. So. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah.
yeah, my pleasure. All right, well, thank you all for attending um, our thought leader session. Um, our next event is coming up Tuesday of next week at one o'clock Eastern time. Um, what is a futurist? Um, it's a free event, um, about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, we'll have Christopher Brennan, um, who's a trained futurist, um, talk about what a futurist is, toolkits, um, you know, a, a toolkit that he has, and um, it, it should be pretty interesting. It's actually sort of a, an introduction into futurist, and then we have a, a course coming up later that dives more deeply into that, a, a two-day course. So, um, so look for that on the on the website. I well, thank you all my, very much. Some of my yeah, friends so and I colleagues did. there uh, posting thank yous in the uh, chat. So thank you, uh, Cody and Dwayne, Scott. Thank you so much, and, and Colleen. Um, really appreciate all of you being here. And if I missed somebody, sorry about that. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't thoroughly <laughs> get to read the chat yet. But thank you. All right. You all have a good rest of your rest of your day, whatever time it is.